Another month, another comic haul. Hey everyone, it's VM Campos, comic book fan. I've got another comic book haul to show off. So first of all, I'll start with Marvel. And hey, look, it's the J.J. Abrams brand new Spider-Man series. So yeah, J.J. Abrams and his son, Henry Abrams, plus Sarah Pacelli, they're doing a brand new Spider-Man series. Kind of interesting, right? The J.J. Abrams. Don't mess it up like you messed up Star Trek. Next up, I've got The Amazing Spider-Man going big. I didn't know anything about this, but my local comic shop was very helpful and put it in my pile because I like Spider-Man. And uh, this has got stories by Jerry Conway, Mark Bagley, and Eric Larson. That's interesting. I grew up uh, in the 90s with Mark Bagley after Todd McFarlane. Well, it was Todd McFarlane, then Eric Larson, then Mark Bagley on Amazing Spider-Man way back in the early 90s. And here they are doing some issues again. So it's uh, it's kind of like a mini anthology, a few little short um, series or stories that is about Spider-Man, Eric Larson cover. He still has that style that I remember from the 90s and interior is the same way. Mark Bagley, I have to say, it doesn't feel like the classic Mark Bagley of the 90s, but it's still a kind of a fun book overall. And that's Spider-Man going big. Are you spider man out yet? Because I've got Amazing Spider-Man uh, number 29 or uh, legacy number 830. Wow, this is by Spencer uh, uh, Mana and Lopez. So uh, regular cover right here. Uh, this is by Ryan Otley and uh, kind of cool pose. If you look at it this way as well, there's the uh, streets of New York and Spider-Man is flying at you, swinging at you. Now, if you look at it like this, he's like twisted way too much. I just noticed it. If you look at it like this, his body is twisting way too much. If you look at it like this, oh, it looks fine, I guess. But then when you look at it like this, it looks, hmm. Okay, and I got 29 and 30. So this is part of the Absolute Carnage storyline. I'm not following that at all. I don't know. I think it's way too much. Um, you know, back in my day, it was just Venom. Okay, yeah, then there was Carnage, and then there was Maximum Carnage. And Carnage had his own series a few years ago and everyone got Carnage's eyes on the cover and like now, okay, Spider-Man, Carnage, Absolute Carnage, okay, I guess. Uh, Spencer Otley, Rathburn, and Fairbairn. Uh, Spider-Man beat up as always, poor Spidey. Another Otley cover. Continuing with the House of Ideas, the History of Marvel Universe, number three. This is by Mark Wade, Javier Rodriguez, and Alvarado Lopez. So McNiven cover, classic style of the characters. Like I feel it's like very 60s style to some degree here. Uh, Scarlet Witch looks a little weird. There's a Nihilist and um, Namor is cool. And the thing, it's clobbering time. So I love these sort of like uh, histories of the Marvel Universe or like histories of, the, of these comics types of anthologies and such a historical thing. I'm a sucker for that. Happy birthday, Marvel Comics, 80 years old. All right, as we continue a series over there, we end one. The unbeatable Squirrel Girl is going to end very soon because this is the anti-penultimate issue of the unbeatable Squirrel Girl, number 48. But I believe it's got some legacy numbering as well. I don't know if it's really, really, really 48. Because they just celebrated 50 issues with legacy numbering a few months ago. So it's actually past issue 50. But um, this is pen anti-penultimate, which means third from the last. There's anti-penultimate, then there's ultimate, then there's ultimate issue. So Squirrel Girl is winding down. That's with uh, North Charm and Renzi. Uh, North and Renzi have worked on Squirrel Girl... Uh, for years, along with Erica Henderson, and then now Derek Charm is doing the art. And here's um, uh, Aris, Erica Henderson. She's still doing the covers, apparently. And it's uh, Doctor Doom looming over a defeated Tony Stark. But don't worry, Squirrel Girl can handle Doctor Doom. She's done it before. 300 issues of Spawn. One of the few comic books that have reached such a milestone, independently published. Uh, I don't know, do you still call Image an indie publisher? But it's still um, Todd McFarlane's baby for 300 issues at later. Uh, actually, you know, he still writes it, but doesn't really draw it uh, that much anymore. 
300 issues. And hey, why didn't they use the uh, cover swipe of Amazing Spider-Man 300 again? They used it way back like on issue 270 or 190 or something. But Amazing Spider-Man uh, would have been overkill to do it again. What if they had used it but then reversed it? So Spawn has borrowed that cover way too many times. And recently they were borrowing the covers of Amazing Spider-Man 298 and 299. And they didn't continue it for 300 because they already swiped it way too much. This is a cover price of $7.99, which I guess is to be excused because uh, Image Comics are often pretty affordable. So here's a monumental, uh, like, triple-sized issue. It's, like, really heavy. And it's 300 issues of Spawn. Very few comics have reached that milestone. There was, of course, the Cerebus in 2004. And then now, uh, so that was 1977 to 2004. And now we've got Spawn, 1992 to 2019. Savage Dragon is about to get there as well. 300 whole issues. Um, and also at Image Comics. So congrats to Todd McFarlane and crew. 300 issues. Usagi Yojimbo. This is a series that's also um, nearing 300. Well, if you count legacy numbering... This is, I believe, issue 245 in a series. Every single Usagi issue from the various publishers has been a, 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 over 200 issues. I believe it's 246 or so. Um, and this is with IDW. They restarted the numbering after being at Dark Horse Comics for like 20 years. They started again at um, IDW. And I like how they do like these short uh, stories within each issue. This is the two-part The Hero. Uh, issues 1, 2, and 3 were doing the Boon Rock storyline, and now it's doing the Hero storyline, two issues. This is a, a you know, classic uh, woodcut style cover, and um, Stan Sakai is continuing his uh, character, uh, invented in 1984. That was 35 years ago. Happy birthday, Usagi Yojimbo. So Sakai does everything with colors by Tom Luth. Honestly, I don't like the colored version of Usagi Ojimbo. There have been previous colored versions of Usagi Ojimbo, but they felt better. Um, like the colorization, like this is a very modern colorization inside. Um, the cover, if you look carefully, it also has a texture, which I would have loved if they kept the texture inside, but they're trying to do this wood grain texture on the outside cover. So, okay, it makes sense. On the inside art, the colorization is too flat. It's I don't really feel it, it adds very much. Uh, the black and white Usagis were amazing, just because, again, it's um, uh, a lot of great pen work that Sakai puts into it. So stories are cool, and the character I love. Um, art overall is good. Coloring is okay, I can live with it. But I'm on board for a new Usagi series. How about a new Rick and Morty versus Dungeons & Dragons? series. This is chapter two, Painscape. So after the success of uh, the original Rick and Morty versus Dungeons and Dragons, they brought it back. That was a four issues, maybe five issue series. It was pretty fun combining Dungeons and Dragons with Rick and Morty. But what I like now, at least right here, they are showing the Wizards of the Coast brand. Uh, they weren't showing that on the previous series. So um, that's kind of odd. This is an official Wizards licensed product. This is by Zub Little Ito and Crank. Sorry, Crank! Exclamation point. And here we have, I'm Beholder Rick. My eye stocks are juicy. And then uh, I also have the uh, variant cover, which shows the character stats sheet for Wizard Rick. What do we have here? He's a wizard level 5 human, sage, chaotic neutral. Yeah, right. Rick Sanchez, real name, 6,500 XP, experience points. He's a researcher. He has spellcasting, arcane recovery, arcane tradition, evocation, evocation savant, spell sculpting. This isn't as funny as I thought it would be, um, but, you know, it's kind of cool to see, like, official D&D uh, stats for various Rick and Morty characters. And on Volume 1 or Chapter 1 from last year, uh, they had these as well, so I can't wait to see what more there are. Elvira, Mistress of the Dark Photo cover. So uh, the Joseph Michael Linsner covers are amazing, but I think the photo covers are a little bit more amazinger. And here we have Elvira herself, Mistress of the Dark, issue 9 of her series, which was originally going to be a short series. 
and now they've kept it going. So this is with uh, David Avalone and Dave Acosta. Dave Acosta art is really, really fun, really cute art. And uh, David Avalone's uh, writing is also pretty fun. Uh, Elvira's time traveling and meeting a bunch of like horror icons throughout time. It's fun. Speaking of fun, how about Red Sonia and Vampirella meet Betty and Veronica? So this is from Dynamite. Uh, and this is uh, Red Sonia, uh, She Devil with a Sword, plus plus Vampirella, Scion of Draculon, meeting Archie's pals, Betty and Veronica, while um, like an evil cult is killing people in Riverdale. And this is a beautiful Faye Dalton cover. Uh, she's been knocking them out of the park. And um, interior art is by a uh, different uh, creative team, but it's still very cool art. I love it. And this has been kind of a really fun series. It's a totally WTF series, but check it out. If you need even more WTF, you need Archie vs. Predator 2. Again, a few years ago, there was Archie vs. Predator, and that was a totally WTF series with uh, cute art by Dan Parent. Uh, here we have more realistic and grungy art by Robert Hack. Uh, then we've got DeCampi, Fitzpatrick, and Morelli uh, working on the book. Here's number two of five. It's just WTF. This is the riff on the recent uh, Archie relaunch books by, I think, uh, Mark Wade and Fiona Staples. And it's the Predator getting out of a car at Pop's Chocolate Shop. This is volume two, the, the crossover that you demanded again. I was not expecting this book, but the comic shop put it in my uh, my pile. This is um, Edgar Allan Poe's Spirits of the Dead by Richard Corbin. I love Richard Corbin. He's been creating amazing art since the 70s, possibly the 60s, definitely the 70s. It's a realistic style um, that is just so weird and evocative. And this is uh, basically... Um, Edgar Allan Poe meets Richard Corbin, and I'm on board. Again, I don't know anything about this, but when is the date on this? I don't see any dates. I didn't really do any research, although I see that there is a signature down here, Corbin 2018, but that doesn't mean that this was released in 2018. Maybe he just painted this in 2018. A new... Oh, here we go. A new edition. A new edition with a new story. Eisner Hall of Fame inductee and Angulim 2018 Grand Prix winner Richard Corbin brings his favorite Edgar Allan Poe stories to life. 16 color tales from the award-winning and celebrated creator are collected, including a brand new Poe adaptation, The Man of the Crowd. Masterful adaptations of such classics as The Raven, The Mask of the Red Death, and The Cask of Amontillado are included with color work by Richard Corbin and Beth Corbin Reed. Very nice. I don't know if that's his wife or daughter, probably wife. Apologies if that's wrong. But yeah, Corbin, amazing, amazing art. And lastly, here is an eBay pickup. I'm very happy with this. You might have been seeing me on social media that I've been crowing about it. Air Pirates Funnies, number two, published by Hell Comics in imprint of Last Gasp in 1971. This is a classic vintage underground comic uh, from the 70s. If you don't know about underground comics, they were basically comics published in, the, in 1969 to 1979. The heyday was from like 69 to 70. Uh, published by a bunch of renegade underground artists in San Francisco, California that were just like raunchy, violent, grimy, gritty comics that were not the norm of the time. It wasn't the the um, DC and Marvel and um, other G-rated stuff of the time. It was totally mature, adults only. 50 cents in 1971, this was outlandish. Anyway, so this is also amazing because this book is banned. Uh, Disney basically banned subsequent sales or reprints or the continuation of this comic. There was supposed to be more. If you look on the back, there's a subscription to buy, you know, a whole year of issues, 12 issues. But the creators got sued by Disney. Disney's lawyers were more powerful than the Air Pirates creators. And they won. And it extended copyrights for Disney. It it was like a $200,000 judgment against the Air Pirates creators. 
it, the, it caused the book to be banned from further sales and reprints, etc. And it was a blow for um, copyright restrictions. It was a blow for free speech. So this is a very historic issue. And I've uh, I've seen Air Pirates number one. It's way more famous. It's got Mickey and he's flying an airplane and he's got dope in uh, in the passenger seat. Hey, there's dope right there too. And so it's very mature. It's adults only. It really is. There's sex, there's violence, there's drug use in this with Disney characters. And these, you know, these are perfectly rendered Disney characters. So I don't doubt that this is why Disney got really mad about, hey, don't steal our characters. But you know, how is this underground comic book going to put a dent in a multi-billion dollar corporation like Disney in the 70s and nowadays 40 years later. Um, so it's just really interesting the story behind this book. And you would probably see it as like, hey, it's a real Disney comic, which um, if you don't look too carefully, that looks like the Dell Comics logo at the top. But whoops, it says Hell Comics. And again, if you look carefully there, the bat is holding a bag of dope and holding them up at gunpoint. In the story, actually, they're naked. And yes, you see everything. It's an anthology with a bunch of um, uh, Disney ripoff characters uh, in a very mature, vulgar sort of way. So I have this in my collection. Very happy about it. Got it at an amazing price. It's in pretty good condition, except in the corner up here, it looks like, you know, some rat was chewing on it or something. But besides that, it's... Uh, Got nice color. The interior pages are a little yellowed, but you know, this is a book. Think about it. This is a book that came out of the underground hippie movement comic book scene of the of the 70s, 1970, 1971. And it's been kicking around for oh, for nearly 50 years. And now I have a copy of it. Very happy about that. So to recap, Air Pirates Funnies number two from 1971. Uh, Spirits of the Dead from Dark Horse Comics, Archie vs. Predator 2, number 2. Red Sonia and Vampirella, Meet Betty and Veronica, number 5, from Dynamite. Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, number 9, from Dynamite. Rick and Morty vs. Dungeons and Dragons, chapter 2, from Oni Press, regular cover, variant cover. Usagi Yojimbo, number 4, from IDW. Spawn, number 300 from Image Comics. The Unbeatable Squirrel Girl, number 48 from Marvel Comics. The History of the Marvel Universe from Marvel, number 3. Amazing Spider-Man, number 29 and 30 from Marvel. Spider-Man Going Big, number 1 from Marvel. And Spider-Man J.J. Abrams joint from Marvel. But wait a minute, I've got a couple more things right here. I have also at the comic shop, they had these Marvel Masterpiece cards, uh, 1993 edition. I haven't opened these up in 25 years. Final edition from Skybox, what does that even mean? Uh, Skybox, because great cards are hard to find, 1993 etc. So no guaranteed number of bonus cards per box. Odds of finding Spectra Etch are one in nine packs. I only got three packs, so I probably won't get an amazing card here. So be on the lookout on my YouTube for the crack a pack of these boosters. I haven't opened these in decades. I never completed the original collection. I have the 1992 Marvel Masterworks by Joe Jusco. Uh, but I never cr uh, completed this set. So join me for my other video to check that out. Well, what do you think about my haul? I got a lot of great comic books. Do you have any suggestions about what I should be reading? Um, like this video, comment, subscribe, etc. Share it. Don't forget to check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash vmcompos. You get exclusive rewards, behind the scenes stuff. I think it's worth it. You just have to contribute $1 to get the exclusives. Or just follow on Patreon to keep up to date with everything I do. That's free. If you go to the $2 range, I will actually mail you a vintage comic book from my curated collection. Well, this has been VM Campos, and I'll see you in the comic shops.